Let's do sets, chapter 6, exercise 6a. This is found on page number 74. The multiple choice type is the first question. Choose the correct answer from the options given below. Question 1. This is in the set builder form. So let's read it. X is such that X belongs to, what does this Z stand for? It stands for integers. It belongs to integers and x square minus 4x is equal to 0. Now what uh, is x here children? x is an element in this set. Okay and what kind of elements are these? These are all integers and when we solve this equation we will know what the elements are. Now what is this? Now how do we solve this equation? How do we find out what x is? Now let's take this here. x square minus 4x is equal to 0. Now here, as you can see, in both we have an x, isn't it? Here there, is, there are two x, that's why it's x square. Here there is one x. Now let's take out one x because it's common and let's make uh, a, a binomial here inside. Now to get this x square inside here, what do we do with this x? We have to multiply it once more, isn't it? x into x will give us x square. So I can put this x here, only one x because... If I multiply these two, I will get this back. Now let me put this minus sign here. And from here also, now here I have 4x. Now x into what will give me 4x? x into 4. So I just have to write 4 here is equal to 0. Okay, I hope you understood this. Now if I simplify this, I will get this back. Let's see, x into x is x square. Minus sign is here. x into 4 is 4x. So the same thing I've written it here. Now, once you get factors like this, a binomial here and x here, then remember this point. Any individual factor on the left side, if that is equal to 0, the entire expression is equal to 0. So here we have two factors. Take this as two factors. If any one of these is equal to 0, that means both are equal to 0. So let's take only this first. So I can write this as x is equal to 0. So this is the only thing now first I've taken x is equal to 0. Now I'm going to take this. So I can say x minus 4 is also equal to 0. That is what this point is saying. Now I can solve for x here. x is equal to 0 plus 4. So 0 plus 4 is 4. So x is equal to 4. So I have got two elements here. So x is 0 and I've got x is 4. So if I have to make my set I will say uh, my elements are 0 and 4. Now let's look for this option here. 0 and 4 is option B. So B is our answer. So we found the elements of this set. Question 2. X is such that X belongs to integers and X square is equal to 9. What is this equal to? Which of these? That means we are asked to find the elements in this set. Now, x belongs to integers. That means it can be a positive number or a negative number. And here it says x square is equal to 9. So, let's write that. x square is equal to 9. That means if we have to find x, we have to find the square root of 9. And what is the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. That means if I say 3 into 3, I will get 9. If I say minus 3 into minus 3 also, I will get 9, isn't it? Because minus into minus is plus, 3 into 3 is 9. So now my elements will, can be 3, it can also be minus 3, right? So the elements in this set can be 3 or minus 3 because both, if I square it, I will get 9. So which of these answers have 3 and minus 3? It is option D. So option D is our answer. Next one, set, if set A is equal to this whole thing. So let's find out the elements of set A. X is such that X belongs to natural numbers. That means all the elements in the set are natural numbers and natural numbers begin with 1. So let's go slowly. All natural numbers begin only with 1 and they are positive. Second point is X is equal to n minus 3. So let's write that down. So the elements of the set are n minus 3. Now what is n? n belongs to natural numbers. Again, natural numbers start from 1, 2, 3, starting from 1 and goes on. So, n is also a natural number. 
There's one more point here. N is less than 3. So we have natural numbers starting from 1. And if it is less than 3, what are the numbers? 1 and 2. So now we know that N is equal to 1 and 2. Now we can find the value of X by substituting N with 1 and then substituting with 2 and simplifying this. So let's find out. So here, what is X? X is equal to N minus 3. So in place of N, I'm going to first write 1. So that is 1 minus 3. So how much is 1 minus 3? 1 minus 3 is minus 2 because we put the sign of the bigger number and we have subtracted. Now again, let's write that x is equal to n minus 3. This time, we are going to take n to be 2. So instead of writing n, we are going to write 2 here. So let's write that. So x is equal to 2 minus 3. Now how much is 2 minus 3? It's minus 1 because we have taken the sign of the bigger number and we have subtracted. So now we know the elements of this set that is minus 2 and minus 1. That is, we have not got the elements, but we have these values minus 2 and minus 1. So minus 2 and minus 1, this is what x is. But there's one very important point. So here, what does it say? In the beginning, it says x belongs to natural numbers. And remember, natural numbers are all positive numbers. But here they are negative numbers. That means these cannot be in the set. So this set does not have any element in it. Okay, so which answer is that here? That is option B. There are no elements in this set because we found X is negative. They are negative numbers. The elements are all negative here according to what we have solved. And here it says X belongs to natural numbers. So there is no element in this set. It's an empty set. Question 4. X is such that X is equal to N square minus 1. So let's first write that. X is equal to n square minus 1. Now let's see what else is given. We are told that x belongs to integers. That means this, the elements of the set can be positive or negative. And then let's read this part. We need to find out what n is, isn't it? Because x is n square minus 1. So we need to know the value of n. Now here the value of n is given to us. It says n is greater than 2. And on the other side, it says n is less than or equal to 5. So n is greater than 2. So that means we need to write numbers greater than 2. So we can start with 3. But then look at this part. It says it's less than or equal to 5. That means we can go only up to 5. So 3, 4 and 5. So now we know the values of n. So now we can find the value of x. So x is equal to n square minus 1, isn't it? So first let's use 3. In the place of n, let's put 3. So here we have n square means 3 square. That means 3 square minus 1. 3 threes are 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. So we've got the first element. Now we're going to replace n with the next one, which is 4. So in the place of n square, so here we have n square minus 1. I'm going to put 4 square minus 1. So that will be 4 square minus 1. 4 squared is 4 fours are 16 minus 1, which is 15. Then I'm going to put 5 in the place of n. So n square minus 1 means 5 square minus 1. So that will be 5 square minus 1. 5 fives are 25. 25 minus 1 is 24. So here we have found the value of x. x is 8, then x is 15, and x is 24. So let's circle these 8. 15 and 24. So these are all the elements of this set. So let's find out which option has 8, 15 and 24. That is option A which has 8, 15 and 24. So let's take this answer. Option A is our answer. Okay, now the set builder form of set A. So this is set A and which of these is the set builder form of set A? So here let's see what the elements of set A are according to the set builder form. So here it says x is n by n plus 1. Then it says x belongs to natural numbers. Natural numbers are all numbers that start with 1. Okay, so that means this n that is here and here all begin with 1. Then it says n is greater than 1. 
So this is the most important thing here. n is greater than 1. That means n here, which is a numerator, should start from 2 onwards. Okay? So it's greater than 1. We cannot have 1 as a numerator. So let's look at the fractions that we have here. Here we have 1 as a numerator. But here it says n is greater than 1. Then we cannot consider option A. Let's look at the second one. Here let's see what they say n is. Here it says n is greater than 2. It means it should be 3 onwards. But here we have 2, we have 1. And here it says n should be greater than 2. So that means this option is also wrong. Let's see option C. Here it says this particular part which we need to be careful about. It says that n is greater than 1 but less than 2. Greater than 1 but less than 2. Greater than 1. Here we have 1. So that means this option is also wrong. Now let's look at this last part. Here it says n is greater than and equal to 1. That means we can start with 1 and it says n is less than 4. So let's see whether this will apply here. So let's take this equation which says x is equal to n by n plus 1. And what is n? n according to this is greater than and equal to 1. That means we can start with 1. So let's write 1 and it says that it is less than 4. That means what are the other numbers? 2 and 3. They are less than 4. Now let's replace or substitute n with these values. Let's substitute n with 1 and then with 2 and then with 3 and see whether we get these elements here, these fractions. So let's begin with the first one. So here we are going to replace n with 1. Substitute n with 1. Wherever you have n, you're going to write 1. So here on top is 1 and down n is again 1, 1 plus 1. So how much is this? 1 by 2. Did we get the first element? This is the first element which is 1 by 2. Now I'm going to substitute n with 2. That is this 2 here. So wherever there is n, I'm going to put 2. So in this place, this is my equation here. So in the place of n, I'm going to put 2 this time. So what does that become? 2 in my numerator. Then n plus 1 means 2 plus 1. So what do I get? 2 by 3. So this is another value of x. Now I'm going to substitute n with 3. This is the third element. I'm going to substitute it with 3. So here in the place of n, I'm going to write 3. And down it says n plus 1, that means 3 plus 1. So what do I get? 3 and 3 plus 1 is 4. So I've got my next element. So x is equal to 3 by 4. So I have 1 by 2, 2 by 3 and 3 by 4, which are my elements here. That means option D is the correct answer. Question 2. Write the following sets in the roster form or the tabular form. So when we write in the roster form or the tabular form, there are certain rules to follow. So we write the name of the set and we put the elements in curly brackets. Now we have to solve this. So here it says x is such that 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. We have to solve for x. So 2x is equal to 11 plus minus 3. 11 minus 3 because here it is plus. When it goes to the other side, it becomes minus. So now 2x is equal to 8. Now find the value of x. x is equal to 8 by 2 and 8 by 2 is 4. So x is equal to 4. So the element of this set is only 4. So let's write that. Element of this set is 4. Question 2. x is such that x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So now we have to solve for this. So that is x square minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now you have learned linear equations in class 7, isn't it? Now this is called a quadratic equation where you have this raised to a power. And then we have this just by itself raised to just power of 1. So here you will be learning this in detail. But since we have it already here, let me help you understand in a simple way. Now, this is the middle term. I'm going to split this middle term to make my work easy. That is, I'm going to write, instead of writing 4x, I can 4, I can write 5 minus 1, isn't it? 5 minus 1 is still 4. And then if I put x, it becomes 4x. So, I have split the middle term. Now, I'm going to write this x square as it is. 
minus, instead of 4x, I'm going to write 5 minus 1x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to continue x squared. This time I'm going to open my brackets, remove the brackets there. So in that case, I have to multiply 5 into x and I have a minus sign. So minus 5 into x is 5x and then and now that we've finished multiplying that, we're going to multiply this minus 1x into x. And since we have a minus before the bracket, minus into minus becomes plus. So that becomes plus 1x or plus x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now let's look only at this x square minus 5x. Take out a common term. Which is the common term? The common term is x. So I can put x as a common term and in brackets I can write x minus 5. So what have I done here? In x square there is an x. In 5x there is an x. So I have put that as a common term. I put it out. Now if I multiply x into x I get x square. x into minus 5 I get minus 5x. So I have taken out the common term and written it here. Now in the same way I am going to do here also. Plus I am going to take out a common term. Now what can be the common term here? As you can see there is nothing. So I can write 1. 1 can be my common term. So x minus 5. Now, if I have to remove this bracket, 1 into x is x, 1 into minus 5 is minus 5. So, I have taken this 1 as a common term. Why did I do this? So that I can get just the same thing here also. Okay, to get the same thing here, I have uh, taken out the common term and put this in brackets. Now, this is equal to 0. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to take this x minus 5, which is common again, and I am going to write it only once. x minus 5 and here what do we have what is left is x plus 1 so that will be the product of it x plus 1 is equal to 0 so I took this x minus 5 which is common I put it once here and I've taken this x plus 1 and I've written it here now these are factors of this equation isn't it so this factor is equal to 0 this factor is also equal to 0 so now we can solve for x. Let's take only this. x minus 5. I've taken only this. x minus 5 is equal to 0. Let me write it there. So now I can find the value of x. x will be equal to 0 plus 5 which is 5. So I have found the value of x here. x is equal to 5. This is the first one. Okay. We found 1 because we finished solving only this. Now I'm going to take this. So that will be x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to find the value of x. x is equal to 0 minus 1 which is minus 1. So I have found the value of x here. x is equal to minus 1. So now we have two elements. So this is 5 and this is minus 1 and that those two numbers will be the elements of this set. So let's write that here. So a2 is equal to 5 and minus 1. So, children, this is something new which you have not learned earlier, but you will be learning in detail, but I have tried to make it as simple as possible for you. Question 3. X is such that X belongs to integers. Integers means positive and negative numbers. And look at this part. This part is very important how you read this. Look at this part in the middle that is X. X is the element of this set. Remember that. Now, what are the elements? X is greater than and equal to 3. That means it starts from 3 and it is less than 4. So if it is, now here it says minus 3, isn't it? So x is greater than and equal to minus 3. That means we can write minus 3 and it's greater than that, but it is less than 4. So you have to write all the numbers after uh, starting from minus 3 up to 4 and less than 4 should be less than 4. So minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. So these will be the elements of this set. Let's write it down. So that will be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. These are the elements. Question 4. X is a two digit number and the sum of the digits of X is 7. So let's start by writing a to the power, a, a 4 is equal to now all the two digit numbers which add up to 7 we need to see. Now let's take the smallest two digit number which is 10. 10 plus 0, 1 plus 0 is just 1. 11, 1 plus 1 is 2. 
If we take 12, 1 plus 2 is 3. So we need to get 7. So let's think of 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. 16. 1 plus 6 is 7. So this number is correct because it's a two-digit number and the sum of its digits is equal to 7. So we can start by writing 16. So I started with 1, that is 10, starting with 1, 11 with 1, 12 with 1. Now let me take 2. 2 plus what will give me 7? 2 plus 5, so that's 25. Now let's go to 3. 3 plus what will give me 7? 3 plus 4, so that's 34. Now let's take 4. 4 plus what will give us 7? 4 plus 3 will give us 7, so the number is 43. Then let's take 5. 5 plus what will give us 7? 5 plus 2, so that's 52. Then let's take 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So 61. We can also think of 7 plus 0 will also give us 7, isn't it? So 70. So these are all the numbers, two-digit numbers, the sum of whose digit is equal to 7. So these are the elements. Next one, x is such that x is equal to 4n. So what is n now? n belongs to whole numbers and n is less than 4. So let's write down this and solve it. So x is equal to 4n and here it says n belongs to whole numbers. That means whole numbers starting from 0 and n is less than 4. So what are all the whole numbers less than 0? The whole numbers less than 4 are 0, 1, 2 and 3. And now here these will be n. So n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now here wherever you have n you are going to substitute it with these. Then we will know what x is. So let's begin with 0. So first we are taking 0. So in the place of n we are going to write 0. That means x is equal to 4 into 0 which is 0. So we found the first value of x which is 0. Now we are going to take n to be 1. So x is equal to 4 into n which is 4 into 1 which is 4. So we've got our second element of the set. Next let's take 2. So this time n is going to be 2. So 4 into 2. 4 into 2 is 8. So this is our third element that is 8. Why are we doing 4 everywhere? Because it's given to us in the question x is equal to 4n. Let's take 3 now. So x is equal to 4n that means 4 into 3. 4 3s are 12. So now we have the elements of the set. What are the elements? Let's write it down. So here the elements of this set will be 0, 4, 8 and 12. These are the elements. Now the next one. X is such that X is equal to n by n plus 2. So let's write that. X is equal to n by n plus 2. So now we need to know what n is, isn't it? So here it says n is an element of natural numbers. That means starting from 1 and n is greater than 5. So all the numbers greater than 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, there are many, isn't it? We'll take a few. So let's say n is equal to greater than 5 means 6, 6, 7, 8, 9 and so on. But we can't do everything, so we're taking only 4. So now we're going to simplify this. Wherever we have n, we're going to write these digits and solve it. So let's begin by saying x is equal to n by n plus 2. So first let's take n to be 6. So that is 6 by 6 plus 2. n plus 2 isn't it? So this will be 6 by 8. So the first one is 6 by 8. So this is the first element of the set. Then let's take the next one. This time we're going to take 7. n is equal to 7. So let's put 7 in the place of n. So here it says x is equal to n by n plus 2. So in the place of n, we're going to write 7. So that will be 7 by 7 plus 2. So that is 7 by 9. This is the second element. Next, let's go to the third one, which is 8. So in the place of n, we're going to put 8. It says n by n plus 2. n is 8 plus by 8 plus 2. So this is 8 by 10. This is the third element. Next, we're going to take n to be 9, 9 here and wherever we have n, we're going to put 9. So this will be 9 by 9 plus 2. 
which is 9 by 11. So these are the four elements of this set. There are many more, but we are doing only this many. So let's write down these elements here. So A6 is equal to the first one is 6 by 8. Now if you look at this fraction, you can reduce it to the lower term, isn't it? Both are divisible by 2. So when you divide by 2, you get 2 3s are 6, 2 4s are 8. So this will be our first element. So let's write that 3 by 4. The next one is 7 by 9. We can't reduce it, so we can write the same thing here. So that is 7 by 9. Then we have 8 by 10, which can be reduced. Both are divisible by 2. 2 4s are 8, 2 5s are 10. So we can write 4 by 5. So that is our third element, 4 by 5. Next, we have 9 by 11. 9 by 11 cannot be reduced, so we can write it down here. 9 by 11. Now, this is not all. There are many more. So, we're going to put dots to show that this continues. So, these are a few elements of this set. We will stop with that for now, children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you, children.